and that's introducing ourselves. My name is Gretchen Brinza and I teach science. I've been in CPS 14 years and um, I absolutely love teaching science. Um, the other sixth grade homeroom teacher is Lauren Murphy, so she'll introduce herself. Hey everybody, um, I am Lauren Murphy. I will be teaching fifth and sixth grade writing and social studies. I am covering for Ms. Hatfield's maternity leave until at least March. Um, and I'm coming to you from Portage Park. I was there last year. Uh, this is my second year in CPS and this is my seventh year in education. Before CPS, I was in Houston, uh, which is my hometown. We moved here uh, so that my partner could go do his PhD. Um, so far, loving Chicago. The winters were way easier to adjust to than I thought, so go me. Um, yeah, but my experience comes from uh, international relations and political science in my undergrad. Uh, and I have taught everything from seventh grade English all the way to senior year English and Spanish uh, with some world history, world geography thrown in. I have done a hodgepodge uh social studies and writing my entire career uh and it's one of my greatest passions and i'm so excited to be here with Saganash this year i'll take over next um i'm chris tucci i actually teach the fifth and sixth grade math i also co-teach with uh mrs Noor. i've been teaching in cps for 10 years plus i think i can't really remember and i think this is my six or seven. i can't remember i've been here for a long time now and i'm i love stogging athletes it's home to me, and uh, I look forward to having a great school year with all your your kiddos. And I'm going to pass the baton over to Mrs. Beastie. Thank you, Mr. Chuchi. Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Beastie, and I teach reading. And I have been at Sauganash School for about 23 years almost now, off and on. I was a stay-at-home mom for a while and subbing. And I've been in a variety of positions at Sauganash, including, believe it or not, the computer teacher. I was in kindergarten for a nanosecond. Um, that's why I totally appreciate kindergarten teachers. And I taught seventh grade social studies and language arts for a number of years. And the last, now I'm in my third year of teaching fifth and sixth grade reading. And I love Saugan Ash. I live in the next neighborhood over and I am very happy to be here. And I'll turn it over to Ray. Hi, my name is uh, Ray Escobar. I've been with Saugan Ash for about two years now. Uh, my role here is to assist these wonderful teachers, uh, especially with virtual learning. And I look forward to uh, having a great year and then I'll pass it on to Mrs. Noor. Hi, I'm Karen Noor. Um, I've been dating my my uh, self. I would tell you that I've been teaching for 35 years total so far. So I am the diverse learner teacher um, in the fifth and sixth grade. We also have support from um, Mrs. Vineco. Um, and I don't work just with the diverse learners. I work with any of the students just in small groups and pulling out here and there. So thank you for coming tonight and we appreciate and really enjoy working with your kids this year so far. I'm looking forward to getting to know them better. Thanks. Great, Jamie Vanecco couldn't be here tonight. And then we also have um, both Paula Borman and Carol Steele working with MTSS. I know we have a couple special teachers here today, Deanna Kelly and Terry Court. So um, Mrs. Kelly, go ahead, introduce yourself. Oh, oh, well, thank you. Yes, my name is Mrs. <laughs> Kelly. I'm in my 19th year teaching art as, at Saganash School. And I feel so privileged to be able to watch your children grow up and I cannot believe they're in fifth and sixth grade. And I really love them and I enjoy watching them graduate. Sometimes I cry. Um, I've been a Saugan Ash resident for 26 years. So I'm invested in this community. I love this community and we have the greatest kids in the world. Um, I teach, I've been teaching art. I teach art and I have a graduate degree in mathematics. So my art is often, if not almost always grounded in mathematical foundations, even if the kids don't realize they're doing it. I'll use math terminology, math structures, and that helps their three-dimensional brain development in terms of space, using space, using uh, ideas that they can um, visualize, which I find to be very important. 
And thank kudos to all of you for the work you're doing, keeping your daily lives going and teaching all your kids at home. That is hard work. Thanks, go ahead, Ms. Court. Thank you so much, Ms. Brinza. So I'm Terry Court and I do technology with your students. And uh, this is uh, with remote learning, technology has become a big issue. Uh, I try and answer all your emails as quickly as I can, working with any issues that come up. If there are issues, definitely email me. Um, I'm excited for working with your fifth and sixth graders again. I've worked with them for a number of years, so super important. I'll throw out my years, too. I've been here for 22 or 23 years here at Saganash, so it's, it's in my heart, just like Mr. Chuchi said. Um, if there's anything that I can do, please reach out to me. Most importantly, though, I do want to say, and I want to echo what Mrs. Kelly said, we appreciate everything that you do for your children here uh, and helping them, uh, you know, get to their classes, stay on task. Uh, we couldn't, we could not do it without your help and support. So again, we can't thank you enough. Maybe we should just say thank you all night long, right? <laughs> So um, as you probably have figured out right now, the way that the schedule is designed this year is that they'll have the same specials teacher for a week um, and then it will rotate to a different teacher. And the specials teachers along with the homeroom teachers are working to publish the schedule in Google Classroom to facilitate which special they have each week. Um, we just also wanted to talk a little bit about both synchronous and asynchronous learning. So, um, when I was trying to explain this to my husband, I thought it was a really good way that he put it in layman's terms, but thinking about synchronous as being live and asynchronous as being on demand. Um, but thinking of synchronous as like, that's when we're actually all together as a class with the teachers in a live meet. And this is also where teachers are using breakout rooms during synchronous time. And that is because the breakout room has to also have an adult in it. So um, that is during synchronous time. And then also thinking of asynchronous as this is more independent time. This may be offline, okay? It may be during a meet where they also have to be working independently. And this is also gonna mirror what's going on synchronously, but basically at the student's pace. Um, we also wanted to give you insight into what it's like to be a fifth or sixth grade student. So we're gonna have each person on the team walk you through what it's like to be in their classroom. So Mrs. Beastie and Mrs. Nora, go ahead. Um, I just first wanted to say that, um, just to tag on to what Ms. Brins is saying, is um, at the beginning of the year, we're probably going to be on with an entire group. Um, there's going to be more screen time at the beginning as we get them used to all the different um, tools that they're going to be using. So just be aware of that. Um, if it seems like they're on a lot, that's going to probably, they'll be doing more asynchronous probably as time goes on. But we're introducing in all of our classes these breakout sessions. And I also should mention that in the breakout sessions um, entail that they're going to be with a smaller group. So that's where Mrs. Nor comes in. So I can just um, let you know that in the fifth and sixth grade I have four different classes, two fifth, two six, and Mrs. Nora is in one fifth and one six co-teaching with me. And it's, um, she will work with any student that needs extra help. Um, and she works with the smaller groups. And also, I'm also very fortunate that I have Mrs. Steele, um, who's the MTSS teacher. She also joins me and pulls small groups. So they are being given a lot of support in the language arts curriculum. So I won't go through and read um, everything that I have on my slide, but I do try, um, it's, I'm, I have a strong believer in having my students um, being exposed to a great deal of literature. I use a variety of different, um, now with virtual learning, especially with websites, but um, you probably are already familiar with StoryWorks, which was a Scholastic Scope magazine that has some great um, literature that we present to the students. Um, I've, we're using also this year some more Ready Common Core book. Um, read, they do the IXL. Um, we're also doing a lot of right now this, this ReadWorks, which is a great site 
that has, um, it helps the students get some content knowledge. And maybe like we've been talking this week about DNA and cloning. Um, and it's these short informational texts that they read and respond to. Um, it also, these read works, these short passages also helps build their vocabulary. Um, it also is giving up bringing um, out some additional practice to increase their reading stamina um, so that they can read longer passages. Um, and another site that I've been using a lot already this year is Common Lit. It's an outstanding site used by many um, of teachers um, and that do the language arts reading. And it, again, a variety of literature. Today, we uh, read with one of our groups in Common Lit, The Road Less Travel by Robert Frost. Um, so in, in Wordly Wise is our vocabulary instruction that I will be getting into a little bit later. Um, and I do have curriculum maps that are available to you, but I just want to express the fact that during remote learning, given constraints, I may not be doing absolutely everything, um, but I try to use that as my guideline and introduce them to whatever is working best in the remote setting. And like I said, I'm very fortunate to have Mrs. Knorr available to me and working with me. She's a highly experienced um, special education, diverse learner teacher. And, and also I have Mr. Escobar for one of my larger sixth grade classes. Um, so it, we are a team, we work together. And if you have feedback or questions, please feel free to email me. So I will toss it on to Mr. Chuchi. Mrs. Murphy. I think Mrs. Murphy oh, is on. She's going to go next. Okay. Sorry, Lauren. Sorry. Didn't mean to pass you by. No worries. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful uh, wow. rundown of the language arts. I will take over with writing and social studies. So in writing and social studies, we will be doing um, more of a focus in fifth grade. Um, both of them are going to be using the six traits writing. Um, excuse me. Sorry. Sorry, there we go. Um, both fifth and sixth graders will be using the six traits notebook. Oh, sorry, excuse me, workbook that has been provided for you uh, as a foundation of their writing curriculum. Um, they will also have a focus on social studies in fifth grade. It will be U.S. history and the age of exploration. In sixth grade, it will be more ancient civilizations focused. Um, we will also be using. Um, in order to strengthen their writing skills, the Lucy Calkins writing workshop model. Um, I'm not sure, honestly, for that, we might have to put a hold on that in regards to remote learning, uh, unless I can master a way to put it onto remote. I would be excited to be able to do that. Uh, some poetry mentor texts, um, but our main focus in writing will be the six traits mini lessons. Um, the end result that we are hoping for is uh, an awesome circle model of argumentative of writing. We will be doing practice with that throughout the year. Um, there's also a large emphasis on the process of key writing and historical, um, sorry, historical analysis skills. Um, we will mostly be using in our class, besides at Six Traits, the US Studies Weekly for fifth grade. Um, and I also will be using the writing IXL for diagnostic testing um, for the fifth and sixth graders as well. We already did our first round with it, which was, really fun, um, really tiring for the students, but we had a great time. I got a lot of great data. There is also going to be a use of news ELA or newsla. It's pronounced differently wherever you are, which is um, has its news articles that are able to adjust your lexile levels as well as questioning and essays with it. Um, they have both current events and they also have historical art articles um, and so we'll be using those, especially on the sixth grade level. Um, we will also be using ReadWorks as Miss BC put so wonderfully. It is an amazing resource uh, that helps out with strengthening your reading. Uh, they have exquisite historical resources too. They have primary and secondary sources. And I'm so ecstatic to be able to work with kids on that. Um, we also, I have a huge emphasis on facing history, which has a lot to do with the relationship between your identity and uh, history on both the US level um, and the international level. So that is something that I'm really excited to be doing with your kids this year. 
Um, so yeah, and I also wanna say that I'm extremely blessed to be able to have a Mr. Escobar help me with my 5-2 block at eight in the morning. And then Miss Carol, who is not here with us tonight, will also be helping me out with 6-2 in our one o'clock class. So without further ado, our next person is Mrs. Brin, Mr. Tucci. Mr. Tucci. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, um, I actually want to just piggyback off of what Ms., uh, Mrs. Beastie and Mrs. Murphy has been saying. We are going to have breakout rooms. We've started the breakout rooms. Um, there's been some glitches with the breakout rooms. I've seen it. The students have seen it. Actually, what's been great is a lot of the students are actually very tech savvy and they've been walking me through it sometimes. Um, but the nice thing is I will have Mrs. Knorr with me two class periods out of the day. I'll also have uh, Miss Paula Berman, who I worked with last year in remote learning. I don't know if I'm not going, I'm sorry. Um, and at the same time, I'll... Oh, and another one, Mr. Escobar will be with me. So I'll always have a teacher with me. So when we do the breakout rooms, we'll be able to be in different rooms at the same time and just working in smaller groups with the kids. I'm currently using Envision for fifth and sixth grade. Um, somewhere in the middle, uh, maybe a little sooner than the middle of the year, uh, our sixth graders will break out into pre-algebra, uh, which is McGraw Hill. Uh, I've always done daily practice problems, which are enrichment problems that I give the kids some time to, you know, communicate with each other, work through them. I will find time with our remote learning to do that as well. Um, we will be using IXL. I will be doing a diagnostic IXL for math, which basically tells us where they're at in levels. Um, I've always been pleased since last year how well they did on those. Um, Khan Academy will be using Khan Academy. Virtual nerd is kind of a thing where if a student is not understanding material, they can look it up and have a teacher basically do it, show them the steps virtually, which is kind of neat. Um, and then I'll, I'll also be using Pearson Realize, which is through Pearson themselves to strengthen any of their skills. Uh, also, you can see any of our curriculum maps on our school website. Um, if you ever, if you have any, any questions or you can always feel free to reach out to me. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, and now I'm going to pass this off. Uh, Mrs. Knorr, would you like to add on to anything with math or reading or any of the above? No, I can't. <laughs> oh. there, there is a, um, a tab on those that will read the stories to the kids or read the articles to the kids as an extra. So be aware of that. And I think she cut out. And we'll pass it on to Ms. Roots. Oh, am I good? Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. So, um, I think you okay? Yeah. Mrs. Nor, you okay? Okay. Um, so science in fifth and sixth grade um, is totally phenomena based. And so we actually figure out the big science ideas. So for many of you in this group, you probably think about science as a, a kid and there was a lot of like fact recall or, or telling you about the world around us. And it really is shifted since the framework for K to 12 science education came out where the student um, is actually like the scientist and we dig really deep um, we don't go wide, but we do go deep um, in three-dimensional learning. And so um, I just want everybody to know that as you're listening to these meets, because we recognize that parents are going to hear, right, you're going to actually hear me a lot saying like, I don't know, um, or what do you think, or what should we do? And that's really so that kids can walk the walk and talk the talk of scientists and engineers themselves. So while I may have the scientific knowledge, right, we really want students to be engrossed in what that process looks like for a real scientist. Um, and so you can see here what we're going to explore in fifth grade and what we'll explore in sixth grade. Um, and I also have found that really strengthening kids' tech skills to uh, build upon what they've learned with Ms. Court helps strengthen what we do together in a shared space. Um, we have started breakout rooms, and I will absolutely tell all of you parents, um, the kids are thirsty for it. Um, it has been really fun to jump into a breakout room and see kids, especially in sixth grade, building on all the work that they did as fifth graders. And as a team, we have also recognized um, the social space that a breakout room creates too, how 
during the pandemic, students may have felt isolated and it's really giving them a chance to connect with their peers socially, which is really um, critical at this age. So um, the curriculum that I use is a combination of some open source material and curriculum two that the PTO has purchased, so thank you. Um, but those are really all blended together where the students are doing the figuring out. So that is a day in the life of a fifth and sixth grader um, in short. So um, moving on, we wanted to discuss the grading policy. We recognize that since the spring, things have changed in regards to remote learning. So grades will be earned by students and the breakdown um, is as follows. And we really wanted to clarify what participation means. So really thinking about in terms of participation that students are following school-wide norms, okay, that they are prepared for class, um, that they're on time to class, that they don't exit the meets early, just recognizing that every minute together is really important. Um, we have recognized too that things take longer in a remote setting, so really trying to make the most of all our time together. Um, and participation also means um, being a part of discussions and discussion platforms. Um, and so that means appropriately using the chat. Um, some of us on the team are using a platform called Pear Deck, which really helps with formative assessment where every, every student gets to participate, um, really utilizing what happens in a breakout room. And each week as a team, we've also created a um, a self-reflection. So having the students really dig deep and thinking about, hey, what did I do in regards to participate this week? What did I do to encourage the participation of others? And how can I make that a better experience for everyone? We also have uh, classwork as 30% of the grade. So what they actually do during that class time and turn in, and then assessments round out how students are being graded. Um, Miss um, Mrs. Brinza, one of the questions that came up is how the break rooms work. Um, and the question was, are there teachers or just kids in smaller group chatting? Do you want to take that? Yeah, sure. That's fine. So that's a really, really great question. I can't see who wrote in the chat, so thank you. So as of right now, Google Meet itself does not have breakout room capabilities. Um, that is something that Google has promised to actually deliver. So in the meantime, there are two workarounds, um, one which CPS has actually recommended that our team is trying. And how it works is we basically create separate breakout rooms in addition to the whole group meet that the teacher has access to at all times. So there absolutely is an adult there. Um, so if there's not a co-teacher in the situation, um, you know, the meet is left open and we can always hear what's going on. Um, there is also an extension that is happening um, that is a little bit more complicated to add on. And what we've actually figured out, just so parents are clear too, is that when you add these extensions to Google Chrome, think of it like you could get the base model for a car and then you can add all these features. Well, sometimes when you add these features, they end up like interfering with one another. Um, so we are learning as we go alongside that. So we have not tried the extension yet because CPS um, has actually recommended creating the separate breakout rooms. So just so everybody's aware, this could all change in a month um, when Google said that they're supposed to create the breakout feature directly in Google Meet, just like Zoom has breakout rooms. And Ms. Court, I know if you're still here, I don't know if you can chime in on anything else regarding breakout rooms. Well, we're working yeah. on them. <laughs> Uh, it's, it, it is a work in progress. It's not perfect. Um, teachers are, are totally working on them. We have, uh, Mr. Kennedy and I uh, have been in communication. Google Meet, Google has sent out some information. So definitely Google is close to incorporating that within Google Meets and we are looking forward to that. Um, but, uh, you know, we strive to make it work and, and that's all, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, and we are absolutely learning and trying that right now. And just so parents are aware too, um, with all of my science classes, it was a really big takeaway for students. I've done it with sixth graders where we actually talked about what could happen in a breakout room. And um, also talking about responsibility of a student and what to do to follow our school-wide norms. Um, and it was just really interesting the takeaways that some students had from that. And I just, I really want to applaud the kids because they have worked really, really hard to help the team figure out the breakout rooms. And I, I really can't say it enough that they have worked really hard because it's something that they want and they value from their class setting um, to do remotely too. So kudos to the kids. 
Um, here's our grading scale. I think this is pretty traditional for what most people um, know of in terms of grading. And then, then obviously Aspen is up and running. And if you have any um, questions regarding that, if you can't get in, uh, Mr. Kennedy is more than wel welcome to helping you with that. Um, and again, we just we cannot thank you enough for all that you do. Um, and if you have any concerns, um, please absolutely reach out to your teacher. We have seen it already, and we just we really want everyone to know that we are really there to help you in this really, really challenging time. But again, we thank you for all that you're doing to help support your kid and their education. So thank you. I'm not sure if there's any more questions that need to be addressed. We're not having any more in the chat, but if anybody wants to jump in and add something to the chat or unmute and go ahead with the question, we are happy to answer. Thanks, Ms. BC. Yes, hi, it's uh, Ms. Tassoni here. Quick question for you guys. I'm just trying to understand a little bit of want someone to raise, like ask a question or participate. Is there like pretty consistent about either raising your hand, visual cue, or texting. I know there's, it's been very, a little bit glitchy, at least from our end. I don't know how everybody has been, but I know we'll get through it. Just curious on that aspect. What's the, what's um, the plan? Are people visual cueing? Are they texting something within the chat? Is it different amongst the class? In, in my class, this is Ms. Murphy speaking. Uh, in my class, I have students put in an exclamation point which shows which form is their text in chat version of raising their hand. So that's asking permission to speak or ask a question or share out, anything like that. So um, until I know that Google's trying to roll out a model where I think they have the extension already, right? Where you can download it and students can like click a button and there's an icon that comes up, but it's like not solid or they're going to roll that out, I think. For now though, um, I know for me personally, they do an exclamation point in the chat. Uh, and that is a visual cue and a text clue uh, for myself and their classmates that that student is indicating that they want to share out. In my uh, okay, go ahead. I was going to say, actually, because I'm in both Mrs. Beastie and Mr. Tucci's class, I could speak to both of them as, as far as um, depending on the questions and things, if they're understanding, sometimes it's just a thumbs up so I can see that they're understanding. Um, we also encourage them to use the chat quite a bit if, if they have a question to put it in the chat. And especially if um, I'm presenting or Mr. Nucci or Mrs. Beastie's presenting, one of us then is monitoring the chat and saying, you know, okay, we'll get to that question in a minute. Sometimes we do ask them then to raise their hands also, you know, um, depending on if we're doing a math problem and who would like to go next, they could just put their hand up and we can see them. So that's kind of how we work it with uh, Mrs. Beastie and Mr. Chuchi's class. Hope that was okay. Did, uh, did, did. Yeah, I mean, that's helpful. I'm just, I was just curious, like how we were trying to, I know it's been a little glitchy. Sometimes these are visuals because they have to turn off their camera and or, yeah. and, or the chat has like some freeze ups and they're trying to ask the question. So I was just wanting to understand because as I sometimes pass by the room, I, I could hear her like, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we also encourage them to, is to, they can always email us things okay, you know, some right. of the kids emailed us and said you know i got kicked off i can't get back yeah. on you know and then we address that on the side and then towards the end of the day last period is the time that they should be doing some of their work and and we are all available for them to come in like today someone popped into my room and said oh miss nor can you help me with this and so i went over that with that child you know so oh. that last period is for two that's good thank you i appreciate it thank no you for problem. everything you guys are doing Thank you. Thank you for your support. <laughs> I think Google too, Ms. Court, you can, I think that's going to become a feature of the meet. They really want it so that your camera can be off for bandwidth issues, but that you can actually signal that you do have a question or raise your hand. Correct. I, you know, I think Google is trying to put in some things that make it easier for students 
to not only connect, but then also, you know, participate and ask for questions. I know Mrs. Kelly uh, shared this one with me. Um, uh, it's a hand right into the camera, and that way we we know that they're, or I know that they're actually asking a question. And kids are really good about that. We've asked students to use more of gestures versus just the nod of a head uh, because it's easier to see. Uh, we're totally, we're using all different modes of communication. So students who may be having difficulty with cameras can chat and we have chats up and we're monitoring them. So we're really trying to utilize all the, the modes that we have to get and, and get the feedback from your, your child and get their participation. Yeah, I want to address too, I, uh, I see a mom question about having access to all of us and the answer is yes. So we are literally starting at two o'clock. Um, I know I say this with my homeroom and I could probably speak for the team, but we have really tried to diligently tell students you need to check your email. You need to check your to-do list. And it's at that time where teachers have also um, reached out to students that they need to meet. So they need to join that classroom for that meet that we have together. So for example, if I had to speak with Mr. Chuchi regarding, you know, an assignment that we had, I would shoot him an email and say, okay, please meet in our meet at 2.30. And then he would join me and it would be like I would be working one-on-one -on -one with him. And we've also told the student it's also vice versa, that if you need additional assistance with something, you absolutely can email your teacher. You know, we have talked, you know, in this remote setting, I think that it has really come to light how much one-on-one -on -one interaction we have with a child in a brick and mortar building. And, you know, I can just pass by somebody and say, hey, like, great job, or like, talk with me while you're getting your backpack. And that doesn't happen now. Um, so we just have to be way more deliberate about that. And just practicing checking email, especially because it could become overwhelming with every time a teacher posts an assignment, a child can also get a notification. So just learning how to filter through that can be a challenge for kids too. So. You're welcome. You guys are a great group. This is how quiet the Google Meets get. Put you guys um, in a breakout and you're all gonna chat. <laughs> if I may really quick, um, as a new team member to Saganash, um, I just wanted to say thank you for a lot of the warm welcomes I received. Um, and uh, yeah, so just thank you for warm welcomes, uh, helping me feel a part of the community. I do appreciate it. Um, and all the well wishes and just extensions of gratitude and grace um, and helpful hands. So I just wanted to say from, from me, or from, from, excuse me, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time. If there's no further questions, you can leave the meet. Isn't that what we say? <laughs> Everyone has to leave before 